Let's look at this MJ19P42 question 8. This one is a bit of a tricky troll because it's the first time you do this, you feel like, huh, what is going on? So let's look very carefully at the setup. An electron is traveling in a vacuum at a speed given to us 3.4 times 10 7. Electron enters a region of uniform magnetic flux density as shown. Do you notice something unusual about this diagram? How is it different from what we usually see? Say, miss. Magnetic flux is pointing to the right. Particle is at the angle. Okay. Where is the force going to be acting on? Ah? May I ask? You have to align your fingers a little bit. Let's say we look at the particle at this point. You have magnetic field pointing to the right. You have a particle. I know it's at the angle, but you can resolve it to be in this direction. Because ah. this is where the... Uh, what you call that, the component of velocity will be causing the force on the particle. So let's call this the normal component of the velocity V. Then where is the force pointing? You point to the right middle finger up, twist your hand a bit. Your force is actually pointing into the page. So I'm going to draw this. Wow, so the particle is, spiral is going into the page but doing circular motion into the page, out of the page, into the page, out of the page. Wow, what is going on, man? Okay, okay, calm down. Just give your heads up first. Force is into the page. Okay, okay. The initial direction of the electron is at an angle of 30 degrees. When the electron enters the magnetic field, the component of its velocity normal to the direction of the magnetic field. So normal means perpendicular. Lah. So that's what it means. The, that component will cause the electron to follow a circular path. Okay, so a reminder. Now you have component already. This has a component normal to the field, but also another component parallel to the field. Ah, yeah, we draw like, a bit small. Nah. Vn. This one? V parallel. I just draw two lines. Lah. So it is the Vn that will cause a force, magnetic force to act on this particle. V parallel, no use. Remember we say if a B and the V is pointing in the same direction, the force is zero. So this one is got a purpose, but we don't know yet. Okay, so we know Vn will cause F. What will this one cause? Question mark, question mark. What is this, per what is this component going to cause the particle to do? We'll find out soon. Okay, let's focus on the first one first. So we have a two components ready. Mm, calculate Vn. Oh, so we, we know that this one is 3.4 times 10 to the 7 is a hypotenuse. This is just to throw back to projectile motion. Uh, got horizontal, got vertical component one. Okay, okay. We do our, our trigonometry based on this triangle in the upper left corner. So if we check carefully, we want to find Vn. We know the angle, right? We can redraw this diagram like that, I suppose. So this is 30 degrees. Okay, la, I redraw the diagram like this. So we can say that Vn will be 3.4 sine 30. So we write that down here. La. Vn equals to V sine 30. So this will be 3.4 times 10, 7 sine 30. You should get a value of about 1.7 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. So let's... Why are I all green color? Ah? Oh yeah, never mind. Once in a while change color also can. Huh? Okay, one on one mark only. Then. So this one, if you just write Vn sine 30 and you plug in your calculation, can already. So remember, Vn is a component that will cause a circular motion because there will be a force acting on that uh, particle with that component. Okay. Find the radius of this circular path. How to find the radius of circular path? If you want to draw the circular path, oh, it's going to be into the page, out of the page. Oh. So something let's draw with maybe highlighter. Hmm. Maybe it'll be something like this. So you go inside the page, come out of the page. Go inside the page, come out of the page. That will be the radius of that circular path. Okay. So here it will go in, come out, go in, come out, go in, come out, go in, come out. Hmm. 
what is the radius of that circle? We cannot see the circle because it's a top-down view. But we can redraw this diagram a little bit if you want to see like where's the force uh, acting on the thing. So let's let's sketch this out so we can have an idea of what to think. So imagine we are now looking from, we put our eye over here and we look in a direction where the magnetic field is going away from our eye. So we're looking at the side view now like this, okay? See the eye there? We're going to change our perspective. So the magnetic field is going away from us. Something like this. And the particle is going to have a component upwards. Okay, so we have a particle upwards. Mm, force will be where? Use your hand and double check. Force is to the left. So we say, okay, to the left. But hang on a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. This electron there. Electron speed. Miss Electron should be coming out of the page. Oh my, I didn't see this error earlier. Ah yeah. Electron coming out of the page. Reverse a bit your hand. So if it's an electron now, you point your middle finger this way. Opposite direction of Vn. Middle finger. Okay, change direction. So point to the X on the right side. Middle finger down. Electron to the right. Okay. So that will be the force acting on the electron. Wow, very tricky leh. Got electron there, didn't see. So from this diagram on the right, you can kind of see like, oh, if you change the perspective, you will see the particle start to move like this lah. Bing, 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 bing. Curving, curving, curving now. Because the force is pulling it to the right from that perspective. So this is a side view. Where the eye is looking. Okay, now we want to find the radius of this thing. So we got to use our Vn to find and sub into this equation. So let's put it down here. Okay, let's see. Ooh, um, what provides centripetal force again? Magnetic force provides centripetal force. So you can say mv squared over r equals to bqv sine theta. Now you got to be a little bit careful here. The V here uh, is what V? Uh? Got so many V. Uh. Got Vn. Got V perpendicular. Got the VV. Which one to use? So the, the, the one that we are going to use is in circular motion, this V is a tangential velocity. So the one, the velocity that is tenden tangential to the circular path. And that will be this one. Because here, you will have a circular path. Ma, so your V is going to be this Vn. Then here Vn. Then go down Vn again. Okay, so that will be your tangential speed that you want to use for the calculation. So better clarify a bit. Oh, yo, 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 okay. We put there a Vn to be careful. How about this BQ V sine theta? What is this V sine theta? The V sine theta is just the speed where you enter the field. Which means this V is this one. Where is it? Ah, 3.4 times 10 to the 7. Then at the angle, got theta. Oh, so be careful. Ah. Here the V, you have, to be, you have to make sure they are not the same thing. Because they are not the same thing. So reminder to self, these V are different. So how to calculate? Maybe we simplify a bit. V sine theta, we just now say, is Vn. So we resolve it into the tangential speed. I'll make our life a bit easier here. So we'll just say, oh, uh, mvn squared over r equals to bq vn. Ah, then you can divide both sides by vn, make calculation a bit simpler. So let's divide both sides by vn. Get rid of the vn. And so here you will have r equals to mvn over bq. So sub in your values. Mass ah. what is moving? Electron. What's the mass of electron? Go and check the data formula sheet from the first part. Then you can see that, oh, mass of electron, check the data formula sheet. It should be about 9.11 times 10 negative 31 kg. Very, very, very light. Vn, we found previously 1.7. So we write there 1.7 times 10 to the 7. Magnetic flux density, they go give us a ah, Got B up here. 3.2 millitesla. 
up here. So we write there 3.2 milli, uh, don't forget, 10 negative 3. Uh, what else? Q, what's the charge of electron? If you forgot already, go check the data sheet. But it's 1.6 times 10 negative 19 coulomb. So the final answer that you get would be about 0 0.0302 meters. You can put 2 SF, uh, so 0 0.030 also can. 3 marks for this. Whew. Okay, so 1 is for final answer. 1 is if you sub in all the correct values inside this equation. And 1 is if you know how to equate what provides centripetal force. Magnetic force provides centripetal force. So that would be your equation, uh, equation mark. Okay, so the, you just be careful. Uh, this V here may not be the same thing. Your BQV and your MV square over R. Uh, the Vs are a little bit different. So you got to make them the same or you substitute different values into them. Uh. Alright, the last part. Oh, second last part. State the magnitude of the force on the electron in the magnetic field due to the component of a velocity along the direction of the field. Huh? What, what, what? Read again. Magnitude of the force because of component along direction of the field. Oh. So remember we say the velocity has two components. One is perpendicular to the field. One is parallel to the field. So they're asking you, this one uh, where the component where it's parallel to the field, does it cause any force? Uh? Excuse me, no war. Here we got BQV sine theta. Even if you think this sine theta, there's no angle theta, is zero. So this whole thing is zero. So the parallel component will not cause a spiral force on this particle. It won't cause this force to have some kind of magnetic force. No, no, no such thing. So this V perpendicular, uh, V parallel, not going to cause anything. So they say that, uh, zero, uh, zero, none, zero. Force due to the velocity that is perpendicular to the field. So no force due to that. Hmm. I wonder why they asked that. So actually, uh, the force is useless. Lah. Why they got free per parallel for what? Ah, that's where part C comes in. Use the information from A and B. Where's A? A, B, to describe the resultant path of the electron in the magnetic field. Wow. Resultant path of the electron in the magnetic field. So if we look back at this diagram, we know Vn will cause a force. That force will cause the particle to move in a circular motion into the page, out of the page. So if it's just Vn, uh, let me draw the whole thing. Vn this way, cause the particle to move like this. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, into the page, into the page, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. But you also have V parallel, which is going to be pointing this way. Oh, yeah, I draw this side. This is the V that is parallel to the magnetic field. Okay, and the resultant velocity is this way. Lah. So what this V parallel does is, now oh, your particle will, will do circular motion like just now, but also it will move to the right at the same time. Because of this, at a constant speed. So this one is a constant speed to the right. Vn will cause a circular motion into the page and out of the page. So the resultant path will look like this. Zoom, 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 but then Vn will be the one where you go circular motion, circular motion, circular motion, circular motion, in circle, circular motion, circular motion, circular motion. That is Vn. Wow, like this also can. Uh, how to describe? So you want to say, this is what we call a helical path, a coil. You know a spring? Like spring, the hook's law spring. So you can say this is a helix or a coil with, uh, with that spiral. Lah. Spiral to the right. This one you don't have to mention it, but just so you know, uh, spiral to the right or in the direction of V, parallel, the orange color one. But you say helix core can already, so this one is V1 mark. 
to help us understand a little bit more about how what is going on here, I want to show you a, a simulation of how this is possible where you have a particle that can do a helical pattern inside a magnetic field. So here's the setup. You have a plane, you have a magnetic field all pointing upwards. For this practice, we'll say pointing upwards. Lah. Okay. And if you have some kind of velocity, this is the velocity vector where the particle will move in the beginning. See, the, the velocity vector here is perpendicular to the field, right? Field is going up, velocity is in the, pl in the pain, plane. And if I let it go, it will do a circular motion, correct? Like normal, so it's circular motion, circular motion, go around. And it is always perpendicular to this field. That's if you only have that component of velocity. But what happens if you add another component of velocity, such as uh, a component, let me pause it here. I add a component this way. Oh, yo, what is this? Ah, this way. So that is a different component now. And this component is in the vertical, in the same direction as the magnetic field. So it's a little bit pointing upwards. Hard to see from this angle, but first one is only in the plane. So you only stay in the plane, rotate in circles. Now is if you have a slight component upwards, what happens? So then your particle will go in a circle, but also at the same time, it will start to spiral upwards with a certain velocity. So I uh, let the thing slowly go. Lah, okay, so you see the magnetic field? It will slowly spiral in whatever direction that component of velocity is. And this is what we call a helix. Okay, so your particle not only has a normal perpendicular to the magnetic field, it also has another component that will cause it to go upwards or downwards, whichever one. Lah. So let's see in the, from a few few perspectives. Let's do uh, side view. Okay, so you see it's slowly going up. There's two components of velocity now. One is parallel to B. One is perpendicular to B. B is what ah magnetic field. Lo. Okay, that is parallel to B, and one is actually pointing upwards. From the top view, it looks pretty much the same, though. It's still a circular pattern, and here you are only seeing the component that is perpendicular to the magnetic field. It looks like a perfectly nice circle. But if you look from the side, it's a spiral. It's slowly going up and up and up. Okay, so take some time to digest this idea. It did, the past year rarely asked like, questions like this of this uh, brain difficulty. But if it does, make sure you are ready for it. Lah. So you know how to think about spiral. And if it comes in at the angle, be careful. Make sure you know which component is doing what. Okay, so that is all for this question. A interesting twist, literally, an interesting twist to particles in magnetic field where they can be a spiral like that. Uh, go digest it again if you need to replay. Ask questions. Any doubts, just comment. Ask someone. Ask me. Ask a friend. Okay, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next few about uh, also level 2 examples on particles in fields. See you in those videos.